Hey everyone, this is Ryan here, and welcome back to our prostodontic series. In this video, we're going to unpack the idea and the concepts behind pontic and connector design. So we've already talked about the components of a bridge. Just to review, the abutment is the tooth to which the bridge attaches. So these two abutment teeth have been properly prepped to receive the crowns of a bridge. The retainer refers to the crown that actually attaches to the abutment. So these two would be considered retainers. The pontic is the fake tooth between abutments and the connector connects the retainer to the pontic. So usually you'll have a pontic or multiple pontics between retainers, but there are cases if you have what's called a cantilever bridge, you can have just one retainer and one or more abutment, uh, one or more pontics attached to it. So you can have different uh, combinations of these elements. So let's focus on the pontic and the different designs that these fake teeth can have. So the first one is the hygienic pontic, also sometimes called the sanitary pontic. And this is a cross section or side view of this design. And notice the space between the pontic and the ridge. So the hygienic pontic is used primarily in the posterior mandible region. It offers great hygiene capability and hence the name. And the reason for that is because there's space between the pontic and the ridge. So you can fit a round brush between this, you can fit super floss easily, and you can keep food and other things from getting caught between the bridge and the gingiva. So that's the main benefit of this design. However, they're poor aesthetics because you have a pretty big gaping hole between the tooth and the gums, and you need to have enough VDO, which is vertical dimension of occlusion, or restorative space, meaning there has to be enough room to afford this extra two millimeters of space. Otherwise, you're going to have to make this tooth, or the pontic, very, very thin. And when you make something in dentistry too thin, it's prone to break and fracture. So the second pontic design is the saddle pontic, or the ridge lap pontic. And this one you really should never use. And it's because like a saddle on a horse, it firmly wraps around the ridge here. And so there's no way you could fit some kind of bri uh, some kind of brush underneath that and keep it clean. And it's very bad for hygiene for that reason. So a lot of things can get caught under there and it's very hard to keep the area clean. It can lead to periodontal problems around the abutment teeth and eventual failure of the bridge. So this one is not often used and in fact you should never use it. The next design we have is the conical pontic design. This one is reserved mostly for molars and it's similar to the hygienic design but marginally better aesthetics. So the conical design you can see has a conical shape to it from the side view. And instead of having this space, it has just one little point of contact at the ridge. So this enables you to slide a brush under here. There's, of course, some give of the soft tissue, so you can put a brush or some super floss underneath the bridge and keep it clean. So this one's pretty good. It has some pros, uh, and maybe it's not as hygienic as the hygienic pontic, but it still offers ability for cleansability. All right, so we talked about the ridge lap or saddle design. This is a modified form of it, so we call it the modified ridge lap pontic. This is reserved mostly for anterior uh, pontics, and it offers really good aesthetics. So this is a look at the modified ridge lap. You can see instead of wrapping around the buccal and the lingual portion of the ridge, it's only sort of halfway in contact with uh, the buccal part of the ridge, and the lingual part is kind of more like the conical design, where it peels off and isn't 
firmly attached and uh, right up against the soft tissue. So this enables you to have some cleansability, uh, not as much as the conical or hygienic designs, because there's a little bit more contact there, but you're talking about an anterior tooth. So aesthetics is certainly a consideration. So you don't obviously want to have a big gaping hole here, and even just a little point contact isn't going to look very natural. So having this profile contact the soft tissue, you can actually make it appear as if it's coming out of the gingiva and make it a pretty aesthetic look. But even better for aesthetics, and the most superior aesthetic design has to be the ovate pontic. This is used really only for anterior teeth, and it provides superior aesthetics because you actually embed the prontic into a little divot in the soft tissue and the ridge that you make. So this one actually requires a minor surgery. So you actually make this space so that the pontic can go into that little divot, and it actually appears, and it, it's coming out of the soft tissue just as a natural tooth would be emerging from the gingiva. We call that the emergence profile when a tooth is coming out of the gingiva in a certain way to make it appear very natural. So this one has the best aesthetics for that reason, but it requires surgery and the proper dimensions of a dental ridge in order to make that, um, that phenomenon look and appear natural and aesthetic. All right, so those are the five pontic designs I wanted to talk to you about, but we also have the uh, certain connector designs that I want to mention. The connector is connecting the re retainer to the pontic. So for connector designs, we don't have five to choose from. We only have really two main categories, those being rigid and non-rigid. So the rigid connector is either cast in one piece or soldered together. So if we look at this image here, these connectors we can think of as being rigid. You can't break them apart. They're stuck together, either cast all in one piece of metal, or these are, have been soldered together. So you can't remove them from each other. The non-rigid connector design is shown right here in this image, where you can actually put them together like puzzle pieces and take them apart. So uh, this male, male, female kind of design is indicated when it's impossible to obtain a common path of insertion between the abutments. So we see a pretty good example of this in this image because the path of insertion is along the long axis of the prep. So that would be about the path of insertion for this one. Since this tooth is tipped, and let's just say you can see how the prep has been made along the long axis of this tooth, the path of insertion for that crown would be at about that angle. So now we have a discrepancy between this very up and down seating and this sort of oblique path of insertion. So if we had this all as one big piece, with one, two, three rigid connectors. It, probably, we might not even be able to seat that bridge because of the discrepancy between the path of insertions. So if this is an issue, then we pull out the non-rigid connector design in order to, first we can seat this one, and then, since this male connector can slide into this female connector, in a very up and down path of insertion, then it's in line with this path of insertion, and we can fit the bridge in two steps, putting this crown in first, and then followed by this bridge component second. So that's the use of having a rigid and non-rigid uh, connector design, and connectors for porcelain fused to metal bridges uh, as a sort of guideline should have a minimum of about three millimeters of height. This is so that you have enough strength of the connector so that it doesn't fracture. Of course, if you could afford to have more than that, 
that's great because increasing the connector height would increase the strength of the connector due to cervico occlusal reinforcement. And by cervico occlusal uh, reinforcement, I just mean the vertical dimension from cervical to occlusal. The thicker that is, the less likely it is to fracture. All right, thanks so much for watching, everyone. I really appreciate all the support. Please stay tuned for the next video in our fixed prosthodontic series. Thanks so much for watching, and we'll see you all next time.